Hey guys and welcome. My name is Cypher and I have a little special video for you today. This is an XSplit tutorial video on how to stream if you have a low-end processor like I do. Start off by showing you guys my properties here so you can see what kind of setup I am running. I'm running a AMD dual core processor, the M320 at 2.1 GHz. While I take a sip of coffee, you can read this. Ah, delicious. And I'm also running 4 GB of RAM, which is only DDR2 RAM. It's fine, it works as intended. In this video, I'll also direct you guys to my CPU usage right here in this corner. It will be a little bit infringed by the fact that Fraps is running and the fact that I'm using a special little theme in order to actually record with Fraps. Hopefully, that won't ma matter at all. Now, this is your standard XSplit Broadcaster program interface. It is a pretty simple program, it is very easy to use, it is extremely user friendly. Uh, it has some pretty cool features built in which I will start off by showing you guys. Here you can add media files, regions, a web camera if you have that. Uh, I usually use this screen region I have right here. This is, uh, I think it's like this much of my screen if you can see my mouse cursor moving around. The reason I'm using this is that I record and stream with uh, an HD PBR. And if I have the screen written here dragged over the uh, the uh, preview window of my PBR, I will have a pretty. Uh, it will be HD quality. It will be uh, in in 16 by 9, and I can also record at the same time. Now you can also add your PBR to this live stream source. The only problem with that is if you if you are trying to do that and you cannot find it, that is actually because you may have your recording software open and they don't actually work together. It's your own choice what you want to do, I just do it this way. Also, this is a pretty cool feature, let me sh scale the viewport up so you can see what is happening on the screen. Now, if I add a media file right here, I have a sweet little spinning watermark I use for my Battlefield 3 videos. And it, ooh, yeah, look here almost at a hundred percent at the moment. I'm sorry if the video is lagging because of this, but this is very important. If you have a spinning watermark like this, make sure you have a process that can actually do it. Now this is just one I made pretty quickly in, um, in Adobe After Effects. The reason I have a green screen on it is because I can just remove it in Sony Vegas. And I cannot make a video with no background on it in Adobe After Effects. But we use the same kind of tool in XSplit as we use in Vegas to remove this green shit. We right click it here and we go to color. Right here we have a bunch of different options. We have uh, brightness, contrast, all that is. Here we have the opacity to turn it down. That will just turn down the entire thing. Here we have our chroma key tool. If you select this and select a color, you can use this these sliders to manually tone in on your color, but easy peasy, lemon squeezy, eyedrop tool, click, done, green screen. Yeah, you can do this with a, with a webcam as well if you have that. Also, you can set it to loop and all that stuff. I don't have that because as you can see on my CPU, it is taking a ton out of it. So delete this. You also have a bunch of different scenes you can make. This is, if you like, if you play StarCraft 2, a lot of uh, StarCraft 2 streamers do this. They have one scene here where they show themselves on their webcam uh, or stuff like that. Then they may have a scene 2 where they have an overlay. Actually, you can see this here. This is pretty laggy. Let's get this away because this is uh, pretty heavy on my CPU. <laughs> Sorry about that. And they, they might meet, might have an overlay over some of their stuff with like um, advertisements and stuff like that. We don't use that. I don't use that anyway. But if you go here to view and resolutions, this is your output resolution for streaming. You can edit them and uh, just check this box to see uh, which one you want, you want to have available. And select the one that you want to use. <clears throat> I use 720p like I said. 
Now let's go to broadcast. You can see here you can broadcast directly here to Justin TV if you have your account uh, linked, which I do. You can also uh, record locally, which is just recording to your hard drive. Let's go and edit this so you can actually see what is going on here. Channel, fairly simple, username, password, all that stuff, easy peasy. Now, video encoding is where the magic will happen. In your preset, this is the most important one of them all. I run, like I said before, with a low-end processor, but I have a killer internet connection. I actually have a 50 megabit up and download. Extremely good for streaming and extremely good for this program as well, because this lovely, lovely program is so brilliant that it can compensate for your low processing power <coughs> or your low internet connection with this preset. The faster the preset, the more it will take from your bandwidth. The slower the preset, the more it will infringe on your CPU. Ultra fast for like people like me, if you have a bad connection but a killer PC, <coughs> just use very slow and it will be a lot more CPU heavy. If you have like, let's say an uh, i7 processor, one of the good i7 processors, just have it on uh, like a med uh, on slow or medium, then you won't lag at all. Quality I have set to 4, this is again to not infringe too much on my CPU. Uh, a little hint, it is always better to have a higher resolution than a higher quality. The bitrate I have set to 1000, this is how much it will, in, uh, it will actually mm, take from your internet. The VP, VPV buffer, I uh, should always be set to a quarter of what your bu uh, bitrate is. As a standard, it will actually set it to the same as your bitrate. Tone it down to a quarter of what it is. Quick calculations, it is 25%, or you can just divide it by 4. I actually had a guy who had googled how, how much he had to put it to because he couldn't figure it out in his set. Sorry. <laughs> resolution here is not that important. The default stage resolution, if you have that set, it will just set it to the resolution you picked out here in the main window. Audio encoding. Pretty, uh, it should be pretty straightforward, but actually it isn't, from my experience. After reviewing some of my older streams, having used 11K and 12, uh, 22K um, stereo, I, um, they were not good enough, quite simply put. I had to pick, uh, go up to uh, 32K to actually have it be decent audio to listen to. Just a little friendly hint. I uh, forgot to mention each other thing, this is just your microphone and your audio, how, how you want all of that stuff, uh, external mic of course. Now here are some of the tips and tricks for improving your performance while streaming and these are actually very simple and they do work, trust me. First of all, right click here and if you have optimized text resize checked, uncheck this. It also says uncheck this for better performance. Yay. Also, optimize for non-motion picture. If your viewers are having problems with a choppy stream, uncheck this and it should fix it. Another thing to optimize your own performance from your CPU is actually to go in here, scale the viewport down to 10%. It really does work. You can actually see my CPU is going to go down here. And Right now, I'm going to show you the golden, the the golden shower of all this. This is like, really, I didn't believe this the first time I heard about it, but if you minimize a program even while streaming, just look at the CPU usage drop like a stone here in a second, and of course it does right now. Yeah, look there, fifty percent. I just saved about thirty percent of my CPU just by minimizing the program. That is insane! Now, there are two more things you can do to uh, uh, help a little bit with performance while streaming. The first thing is, if you use Google Chrome to uh, view your stream or whatever, don't. Google Chrome and XSplit don't actually work that well together for some reason. It might be fixed in an, up in an upcoming patch, I don't know, and it might not, but for the moment, don't use it. Um, yeah. The uh, last thing that is actually uh, 
the most important of all of these tips and tricks, apart from actually minimizing your uh, your broadcasting window, is if you are watching your own stream or having a YouTube video open or Gmail or Facebook or whatever, all of these websites use Flash, and Flash is extremely CPU heavy. You can you can disable your uh, stream window on yourself so you don't watch your own stream. That will help a lot. And don't have too many of these flash applications open because they will also strain your CPU quite heavily. Anyway guys, uh, this is just about it for this little tutorial video. I hope you got you liked it and found it informative. If you have any, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. But for now, this has been Cypher signing out. Bye bye.